So Adobe just released their newest application, Adobe Premiere Rush. And this is meant to be their video editing application across a lot of platforms, not just iOS. Um, this has been a big push of theirs to bring a lot of their creative apps to the iOS platform, starting with uh, Lightroom, now Premiere Rush, and soon to be followed by Photoshop. So this is kind of a really interesting time, especially if you're an Adobe user already, uh, if you're big in the Creative Cloud suite. This is kind of interesting because it gives you an option to work on your projects on a mobile device other than a laptop, you know, whether it's a phone or a tablet. Most of you, if you're already subscribers of the channel, will know I've been editing uh, videos on my iPad for about two years now using an app called LumaFusion. Uh, LumaFusion is a multi-track video editor that has support for titles, all sorts of effects, transitions, um, chroma keying. It's very much a professional video editing application. So when Premiere Rush was announced, I was really excited to kind of take a look at it and kind of see how it's stacked up to LumaFusion. I'm somebody that is a YouTuber that makes videos off for my channel, but also does some stuff on the side. Premiere Rush is really when they marketed it, they're marketing it towards YouTubers. They're marketing it as a place to where you can kind of do your first edit. Um, this really isn't meant to be the final editing application of a professional video editor. Um, it's meant to be, let's cut up your first rough draft and kind of go from there and then you can move it into Premiere Pro or wherever you need from there. Um, so let's kind of take a look at it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new project here. Now on the left-hand side, there's some options here. Uh, you can pick from your camera rolls and photo albums, Creative Cloud and Dropbox, and then there's some sample media. Now there's a big option here that's missing. There is no support for the Files app. So if you use an app like Local Storage or you use iCloud Drive or Box or something like that, it's just not supported here. I think, in my opinion, a huge misstep. Like if they're trying to make an editing application that works for across platforms, you need to support that platform's file system. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just select some sample clips right here. Uh, and then we're gonna call this project just test. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then when it does that, it has to do this preparing media thing, which is really interesting. Now, when it imports these clips, it imports them in a very iMovie style way. There's a single track and it just lines them up and you can just kind of scrub through. This button down here in the bottom left-hand corner that has the bar going uh, vertically with two hor or three horizontally, you can hit that and you can bring up your multi-track view, which this will look a little more familiar for people that are familiar with NLEs or non-linear editors. You can, from here, move clips around and do all sorts of stuff. Um, if you didn't import the clip to begin with, you can come up here and hit this Add button, and you can add from your different media sources again. Looking at the timeline here, you have support for four video tracks, so we can stack these right on top of each other. Uh, kind of move them around right here. Uh, so we have four video tracks, and then there's three audio tracks down here at the bottom as well. Um, you could do pretty traditional things, and this actually feels pretty good as far as like moving these around. Um, the one thing that it does is it kind of locks the clips together, and I really don't like this style of editing. It seems to have been really popular ever since about Final Cut Pro 10 has come around about these locking these clips to uh, the bottom clip, and it's very... Um, it almost kind of feels like it's holding your hand a little bit. And I, I wish there was a way just to straight up turn that off. Um, but I have not found that, so maybe I'm missing something. Scrub these clips in and out. That feels pretty good. Pretty standard um, editor stuff. There's also, you know, cut clips, duplicate clips over here on the side. So we can make a cut. Uh, we could take this clip, we can duplicate it, and then we can just delete the clip right there. All pretty standard stuff. Now this is where Premiere Rush kind of starts to fall down for me. Any iPad application, if you have a keyboard hooked up to it, you can hold down the command key and keyboard shortcuts will appear. Well, I'm holding down the command key right now and there's no keyboard shortcuts in this app. Uh, when I was first going through this, I was hitting the space bar a bunch and was expecting it to play. Anyone that's familiar with a non-linear editor knows you, you hit the space bar button, the timeline will start playing from whenever your, your, uh, your marker is. And I got nothing. 
this is expected to be a professional level video editing application, but there's no keyboard shortcuts. And I'm kind of hung up on this because keyboard shortcuts kind of make a professional application, something like LumaFusion or Ferrite or even like Things 3, apps that are on the iPad have terrific keyboard shortcuts. You can navigate through the app via the keyboard shortcuts. And that's kind of what a pro app is. If you look at the Mac version of Premiere Pro, there are a ton of keyboard shortcuts. And this app, there's none. It's just not there. And I can understand that this is a version one, and maybe I'm expecting a little too much from a version one. But this seems like it would be something that would be very important for a nonlinear editor to kind of have. Everything that you have to do has to be done on screen using the buttons. If you're using an iPad Pro and have a smart keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard hooked up to an iPad, it doesn't do you any good. So that, that's kind of the biggest downfall for me and kind of what will keep me from using the application itself. I am going to be editing this video in this application, so hopefully uh, I can get that all done and it can work and everything's fine. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of see a little bit more. I've, I've been playing around and editing a few videos, and right now that keyboard shortcut thing is just killing me. Um, but let's move on a little bit. So um, up here in the top right corner, we have a few more options. We have... Um, some titles right here. So there's some preset titles, which is pretty standard Premiere. Uh, you can kind of come through here. We'll, we'll pick this modern title right here, drag it up here. And if you pinch and zoom in, you can make the timeline bigger. Um, so you can come over here, you can change all sorts of stuff, you know, uh, font, coloring, size, all that fun kind of crazy stuff. Um, you can go back and change the style too as well pretty standard title options here nothing too fancy there's also transitions so the effects are pretty standard effects you have cross dissolve dip to black and dip to white nothing too uh, fancy these are the basic effects in any editor needs i i would i understand why these are the three they wanted to include i think there should be more but these, if I had to pick just three to pick from, these would be the ones that I would want to have. Color correction here is what is actually really interesting. And I really like what they've done with the color correction. I, I find it to be very superior to what LumaFusion's color correction. Um, there are some built-in presets, so you can do cinematic. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. But you can hit none up here. Come over here to edit and change everything about your clip. So we could come over here and give it a much different vibe. And we'll turn it off. So you can kind of see there's a vastly different feel to each one of those clips. And that's just me kind of messing around quickly. I really like their color correction. It's probably the biggest thing in the app uh, that, that really caught my eye and has really caught my attention. I will say the other thing that I really like about this app over LumaFusion is its interface. Its interface feels much more professional. It feels much more like I'm sitting down at a nonlinear editor to edit a video. Whereas LumaFusion kind of feels like I'm sitting down at an iPad app to edit a video. While both are okay, I kind of understand the pros and cons of each. So if we select this clip right here, this clip has a little bit of audio right here. And we'll go, we'll come over here to this option. You can change clip music. You can come over here to advance and do auto volume and things like that. There's not a whole lot of options here as well. Uh, crop, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can change the vertical position, the rotation, the width. Um, you can do the maintain proportion so you can blow it all out pretty standard stuff for any video editor. You can also crop, which is really nice. Um, so you can kind of do like a picture in picture thing, or if you need to, you know, cut some stuff out or make something fit vertical video or whatever. This is kind of cool. This is kind of interesting. Overall, pretty basic stuff. This is, this is stuff that I would expect a very, almost just a beta, not even a 1.0 to have. I do see where they're going with this application. And that kind of actually gets me really excited. I, I am excited to kind of see where they're going and how this will work. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, so it is a subscription app and to upgrade, you can hit this upgrade button right here and it's $9.99 a month. So if this is a video editor that has caught your attention and you want to use it across all the platforms, that's great. But I would kick myself for not mentioning LumaFusion is a flat $20. So for two months of this application, you could get a, in my opinion, a much better video editor application. And I'm comparing iPad app to iPad app right now, to be completely fair. I'm not saying that, um, you know, LumaFusion will beat Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere Pro or Avid or anything like that. I'm just talking iPad app right now. 
And in my opinion, LumaFusion is the m more superior uh, video editing application. Um, you do get three exports free with the starter plan. So if you just want to mess around with it, this is probably a good way to do it. And it is export, so you can edit as much video as you want. You just won't get to save it. So that's kind of my initial thoughts on Premiere Rush. Um, as they update it and as you know, it gets a little more robust, I'll definitely come back to it and definitely take a little more look. Uh, I've edited a couple of videos already in it. I'm going to edit this video in it. Um, so far, it's it's good. It's a good first step, but I think there's a lot more left to, that needs to happen before this can really be considered a real video editor for somebody on the iPad that works on the iPad that doesn't you know jump between both an iPad and a Mac or an iPad and a PC. So that's kind of it. If you guys have any questions, find me on Twitter. I'm at Chris underscore Lolly, L-A-W-L-E-Y. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day.